Hello, and welcome to Now You're Cooking with Cats. This video is about applying damage over time to a single target and then as pulsing damage in an area. In a simpler setup where you're just modifying health directly, it's the same as in the health regen video, but with a negative value, where you set up a new gameplay effect with a duration, a period value, and where each period expires, it applies negative health. In the case of using damage calculations and damage types, it's a bit more work. We need to duplicate GE damage into GE damage duration. And we make it duration based instead. We could give it a static value for duration, but why not use set by caller again? In this case, we have created a duration dot set by caller. And the period here needs to have a value. If this is set to zero, it effectively just does not run. So for this example, I'm just going to apply it to the character using the old input system. So as before, we're just getting the ability system component, making an outgoing spec. This will be for GE damage duration. And then we assign tag set by color. This will assign the damage. We'll set that to five. We will call it again for the duration. And then we apply. Gameplay effect spec to sell. So when we hit the E key, you can see that it took five ticks of damage. You might be wondering if it's a duration of four, why is it taking five ticks? That is because this checkbox right here. It will apply the effect as soon as it starts, and then every second for the duration. So if I uncheck this, hit E again, You can see that it was only four ticks. But what about area damage over time effects? Like attaching an explosion to an enemy where every second it blows up, doing damage to itself and those around it. To do that, we'll first create a new gameplay ability. We'll call this GA exploding. And in this ability, first we'll commit. And then we're going to call a function we haven't seen before called wait gameplay event. So this will pause the gameplay ability until the event happens. And when the event is received, we can continue. I'm going to create a variable here. I'm going to call it count, make it an integer. Alt drag it out to set it on the event received. I set this to four. And I'm going to control drag it out for the get. I'm going to check if it's greater than zero. And if so, we will go into a loop. So the loop is going to call a function explode.
and this function will take a location. When the count is no longer greater than zero, we're going to call endability. So the location that this explosion will be happening is on the target. So the gameplay event will, will be populating gameplay event data, sending it along as the payload. And then from the payload, we can break that gameplay event data. We're going to want the target and get the actor location based on it, just what we use for the explode location. We're then going to decrement the count. Set it back to that value. And then call task wait delay. We'll give it a delay of one second. And when that expires, we're going back to this branch. In the explode function, we'll just draw a debug sphere. The location is what we sent in. And from here, we're going to sphere overlap actors. We're using that same location. We'll set the radius the same as the debug. And we need to tell it what object types to use. For this, we want it to affect the character. The enemy character in that case. And also the destructible we've created previously, which is physics body. We're going to do a for each. And for what it hit, we ensure that it has an ability system component. And then we're going to make an outgoing spec based on the avatar owner of this ability. We're going to set this to our usual GE damage. Sign tag set by color. We'll just set this to five. And apply it to the target. Now to apply this, we're going to create another projectile. 
We're going to use the, this one as a parent and then change some of the functionality. Calling this uh, projectile exploding. We need event hit. We're going to ensure what it hit has an ability system component. We're going to get the owner of the projectile and its ability system component. This should never not be valid, but it's always good to check. Now we're going to do this a little differently. So instead of applying a gameplay effect to the target, we're going to apply a, or we're going to give a gameplay ability to the player. So we're using give ability and activate once. What this will do is it will give the player the ability, it will activate it, and then it will set a flag that removes it when it's complete. So this will be the exploding ability we just created. Next, we need to send the information that we're using. So send gameplay event to actor. The actor we're using to send this is the owner. It requires an event tag. So for this, we will just create event dot set us up the bomb. And for payload, we need to create one. The instigator is the owner, and the target is the actor, not the ability system. And with that done, we can go back into GAA exploding. and set that same tag, same event tag here. Now we need a way to fire the projectile. So we're just going to make a child of fireability base. Call it fireability exploding. This does not need a type. And we're just changing the projectile. We then assign this to the character. You can see it applies damage four times. So if I redo that, and I hit it twice quickly, you would expect it to apply damage eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The reason that is is because in this gameplay event, we are firing at once. We are uh, sending the event to the actor. When we fire the second time, it sends the event to the actor again. 
and effectively restarts this functionality. So while you can have more than one gameplay ability of the same type on an actor, if you're using this kind of functionality, you want to have only trigger once set. In this case, applied one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So the correct amount. One last thing of note is that it's doing area damage as expected, which means if the player is in range, you can see the uh, armor bar go down. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. If you have suggestions on future content or abilities you would like to see, let me know down below.